call upon you, O God, that you will step into this person's life and cause a miracle of change. Lord, change is what we desire. Because to many of us, life is not treating us according to the prophecies. Therefore, Lord, we ask, O oh God, that your hand, your mighty hand, will be stretched forth into our life and our circumstances and cause a change that we cannot deny. I mean, change that will make us glad. I'm talking of change that will make our life to be the direct reflection of the faithfulness of your covenant. That's my prayer for me. That's my prayer for these people. In the name of Jesus. And as I, as I, as I was about to start this recording right now, I closed my eyes and I see a flood. Flood with a lot of, you know, dead, dirty garbages inside. And, you know, when there's, when there's, you know, flood, especially back in Africa, you see a lot of bottles, uh, nylons, plastic bags and stuff. That's what I saw. Flood. I said, what is this, Lord? The Lord asked me to tell you that when the enemy shall come like a flood, the Bible says the, the Spirit of God shall raise up a standard against them. Now, please listen. God cannot stop Satan from attacking you, from attacking your home, from attacking your businesses, from attacking your health. All that God will do is to open your eyes and give you understanding by His Spirit through His servants, someone like me. So that I can show you the provision that has been made for your defense. That's why Ephesians chapter 6. Apostle Paul speaking by the revelation of the Holy Ghost to him. Talks about the full armor of a believer. After this telecast, go to Hebrews. Uh, sorry, Ephesians chapter 6 and go and read it. The Lord wants you to be prepared. Because the Bible makes us to know Jesus says sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. There is evil in every day. I know when we are coming to the end of the year, people have this emotional belief that ember months, September, October, November, December, that those ember months are months filled with a lot of evil. But the truth is there is evil in January 1st. There is evil in February. There is evil in March. So I want you to understand this. Satan does not work with the calendar of man. But the only thing that you and I can do to ensure that our life will continue to go on smoothly is when we understand the principle of divine protection and then we apply them. And that brings me to the message of today. The secret to divine protection. Sometimes last week I was thinking about someone very dear to me. She had some revelations about some satanic forces and some human agents trying to attack her destiny in her dreams. And this is someone that God is bringing to a new level. And I said, no. I agree with this fellow that the enemy will not be able to overshadow her destiny. She will not go back to the beginning level. The level that you have brought her from, she will never go back to it. I began to make declaration as I was driving on the highway. And then the Holy Ghost said to me, have you forgotten that he that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty? So as long as my children abide under my shadow, no evil can touch them. Oh, I said that in Psalm 91. He said, yes. He said, but many of my people do not abide in the secret place. They visit. They, they stay there for vacation, but they go out again. And that's why the enemy is able to attack them. And the Lord said to me in summary that the secret key to keeping you in the secret place where the hand of the enemy cannot touch your life is when you are consistently in obedience to the commandments of the scripture. And so I want to show you today from scriptures how that you can preserve your destiny because logo logo, it is someone that has great glory ahead of your destiny. You are the target for the enemy. So if you believe that greatness is ahead of you and you do not learn how to protect and preserve your greatness, I am sorry to say, prophets cannot help you. We servants of God, we will do as much as we can do. 
But what about when, when you call her phone number and then he's busy? Or the man of God is also having some other thing he's doing? What happens? And that's why God raised me to grant you insight. So that as you hear the word of God from my mouth, life and the spirit of the word can enter into your life and illumination, understanding can become your friend. For Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth you know shall make you free. In fact, God said to, uh, to Hosea, he said, my people are destroyed, not by, the, not by the works of the enemy. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So let's go into scriptures. Psalm 91. Psalm 91, I'll read from first from verse 1 to verse 4. The Bible says, He who dwells, I want us to mark that word, dwells. Many of us are not dwelling. We go there. We are a member of that place, secret place of the most high, but we don't stay there. You behave as if you have visitor's visa. You go in and go out, go in and go out, go in and go out. You will go in. When you are comfortable, you will go out. When the enemy strike you and then hit you and then with all the pains and all the affliction, you go back again to the secret place where you will be healed and then you will be refreshed. Instead for you to stay there, I like Bono, he will go out again to go and suffer another calamity. And you know the unfortunate thing? Time is going. Time is not on your side. Only God is immortal. All of us are subject to time. It is appointed unto a man to die once, and after that comes judgment. My concern is, the time that has been appointed for me, the time appointed for you, what are you doing with them? Because what you do with them on heart, you will give account before the Lord in heaven. So, knowing how to protect your destiny is of utmost importance. That's all I'm saying. He that dwell in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the almighty so if you want to abide under the shadow of the almighty what you need to do is to make god's secret place your dwelling place the place where you don't go out is permanent residence and i'm sure you know that for you to be a permanent resident of any environment you must keep to the law of that environment so if you are going to be a permanent resident of God's secret place. You've got to make up your mind that you are going to now live according to the instructions of God's secret place. If not, angels will push you out. Remember, they push Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden when they chose to disobey God. They lost everything. Why? One thing. God gave them instruction. They chose to listen to Satan and obey the devil. He that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You know the power of the shadow? When the sun is hot, and you are inside the sun, and you now see a particular tree standing, maybe by the, by the bus stop, when you are waiting for, for metro, or when you are, you know, back in Africa, when you are waiting for bus, you will now go to where the, that tree, the shadow of the tree is. You want to stay there. Why? Because you want to feel some form of coolness, protection from the scourging of the sun. And that is what God is saying, that you can remain under the shadow of the Almighty permanently, where you will have refreshing, where you will be in the same environment, but you will not be feeling the scourge of the heat that others are feeling. And that's only if and when you dwell in God's secret place. Let's read from to verse 2. Uh, David was he said, I will say of the Lord. He said, in case you don't understand what I said in verse 1, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. He's trying to describe what he understands by God's secret place. You know, a refuge is a place where you run to for defense and protection. A fortress is a place where you run to to hide yourself from the enemy. And David said, in case you see that Saul was not able to destroy my life, in case you see that everybody that, that is trying to fight against me, God, God finished them one by one. It is because God is my refuge. I dwell there. He is my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Verse 3. He says, and in case you need to understand what I'm saying, surely our God is a deliverer. He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. That means forget it. Enemy will set a snare for you. They will set a trap 
to ensnare you and put you in trouble. He said, but those who dwell in God's secret place, surely God will make sure that you are delivered from the snare of the fowler. Tobacco de de kolo re posikoto mono mono ashishe la tonu. God will make sure that before you are ensnared, something happen and you escape. The Lord he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. And not only that, and from perilous pestilence. So many diseases and attack are everywhere. And David said, if you dwell in God's secret place, you can be sure of divine protection. Verse 4. And he said something that I want you to understand. He said he shall cover you with his feathers. And under his wing shall you take refuge. I want you to look at this verse of scripture and cast your mind back to mother hen, a chicken, and the eagle. The eagle is always trying to target the chicken because eagle like to eat fresh meat. Meanwhile, hen want to protect our children from the eagle. So when the hen spots that the eagle is coming, he will make a noise. <laughs> All our children they hear and they will quickly run to their mom and their mother will put them under her feathers and then she will brood on them. So when the eagle comes, the eagle will be trying to attack the mother, knowing that if the mother can move, he can snatch the chicken. But the mother will not move. He wants to protect her children. And when the eagle finds out that he couldn't make the mother move, the eagle will soar back to heaven. And that is the example that David is giving. That listen, maybe you still don't understand what I've been saying. He will cover you with his feathers. The eagles of satanic power. That are, that are looking at your destiny and they want to swallow you. Under his wing, you will take refuge. But how many of us dwell there? Allah ignore. Many of us will like to just sway our life like the prodigal son. The prodigal son only went astray once. Many of us will have gone astray more than three times. Because you waste your furniture. You were in Germany. No, Satan jam you. You came, you went to Holland. Holland cannot hold you. Now you are in America. Oh, tomorrow, you still don't know how to pipe low and just run your course with God. What is it now? Okay, let me continue my teachings. Now, the Holy Ghost said to me as I was brooding on that sister and my prayer for her. God said, You need to understand and let your people know that. The secret place of the Most High may be a mysterious place to the people in the Old Testament, but the, the, the secret place of the Most High is actually the kingdom of God's, of God's Son. Colossians 1 verse 13. The Holy Spirit speaking through Apostle Paul, describing to us where we are transferred to. He said in verse 13 of Colossians chapter 1, He has delivered us from the power of darkness. You are delivered from the power of darkness. And when God delivered you from the power of darkness, he didn't leave you in a limbo. He conveyed us. He transferred us. He relocated us to where? The kingdom of the son of his love. The kingdom of God. Jesus is the one in charge. It's God's secret place. It's the New Testament secret place. Satan cannot penetrate that's why even in the old testament the scripture said that the name of the lord is a strong tower the righteous run into it and they are safe in philippians chapter 2 the holy ghost making us to know he said that god has highly exalted christ and given him a name that is above every other name that at the name of jesus all knee will bow in heaven whether the power of darkness is coming from heaven on heart, whether they are among men like the witches and the wizards and the occulted people, or under the heart, whether they are using the power of marine, he said that all of them will bow to the name of Jesus. So when you are under the feather of the Almighty God, the name of Jesus becomes your refuge. So why don't you want to stay there? The only thing the enemy will want to do is to make you to disobey God. Because Satan knows that if he cannot stop God from protecting you, he can stop you from dwelling in your place of protection by swearing you away, by deceiving you, by making men to tell you that this your Christianity is boring. Enjoy life. You are still a young person. Whoa, young man, young woman watching me. 
believe me, I'm telling you the truth. I am older now. I'm above 50. I may not look it. But I still wish that I what I know now, I knew them, or I have someone that will tell me what I'm telling you now when I was in my early 20s. My life would have been far better. Don't waste your life away. Solomon said, young man, enjoy your life, but don't forget, the day, the, the aged time is coming, and you are going to give account to God of how you have spent your life. So don't waste your life in vanity. Don't waste your money by flashy cars. Buy expensive house when you are going to sleep in just one room. You can invest your money into real estate as re residual income opportunity. You can go into transportation. I don't, I don't advise to go into shares because shares price go up and down. You can go into transportation. You can go into haulages. You can go into real estate. You can go into some other things that can be bringing you money. When you have money, listen, listen, listen to me. If back on love you already. Are you love? Are you are you love your papa or papa go only be global day? What I said in Yoruba is that nothing lasts forever. Ecclesiastes chapter three verse one: To everything there is a time and a season to every purpose. Everything has a time. Even the opportunity you are having now to have money, come come. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you to you here. It's not going to last forever. I have been a pastor for more than thirty years. I have seen a few people who were ordinary cleaner. There's a particular guy, I remember now, he was a gate man in Lagos State Government uh, Parasita. And by the mercy of God, he started his uh, uh, lasso, uh, I think his lasso, he was doing part-time, and then he began to grow and go. and by the time he has his first degree, they moved him to the office. Later, he became a big man. When he became a big man, he built houses. Unfortunately for him, he thought our church is too far from where he, he now built house. So he stopped coming to church. Nobody to advise him. Long story short, the, he got a lot of money. Wasted many of them. Right now, he doesn't have much. Another guy was sleeping inside the church auditorium. He was selling a, a plastic bag, nylon bag, nylon. You know that nylon that they normally use to make bread. That was what he was selling in a gay market. And God began to lift him up. He began to lift him up. He became great. He got a job in pig milk. And then when he got a job in pig milk, God began to lift him until he became a store manager. When he has big money, unlike other, unlike other people, they don't want Reverend Sam to be controlling them. He left church. My wife told me some uh, two weeks ago that the guy called her now to let her know that she is be, is be, is been retrenched from 2016. He now needs money to feed his family. I can't even go through my scripture. God have mercy on me. But I believe it's what God wants me to do. All, what, what I'm trying to say is, please, I beg you, mommy, daddy, tell your children Opportunity does not last forever. I wish I can shout on the house top. Opportunity has expiry date. That business that is producing money now, it has expiry date. Go and ask the people that were permanent secretary who were using typewriter in some in early 2000. Now they have become obsolete. They are no more useful. You know why? Because with my phone, I can type. We can do Zoom call. In fact, there are AI now, artificial intelligence, that can translate my words into, into, into text. And then I have uh, some software that can correct the mistakes. And so what I was paying someone to do before, software is doing it for me now. What am I saying? If that secretary did not do anything with what she had that time, right now, she will be in trouble. What am I going to say now? John chapter 14. I've just got to share this. Because I have less than, I have less than 8 minutes left. John chapter 14. Jesus was talking here. Remember, Jesus is the head of the kingdom of God. And you cannot enjoy the benefit of the kingdom that Jesus reigns up upon if you don't follow his instruction. In John chapter 14, verse 21 to verse 23, Jesus said, Whoever has my commandment and keep them, it is that person that loves me. Remember, whoever has my commandment and keep them, it is that person that loves me. And what's going to happen? And he who loves me will be loved by the Heavenly Father. And I, Jesus is talking, will love him. And I will manifest myself to him. I like that word to manifest. To show your true nature. God will show you his love. He will show you the secret of his power. You will know the things that others don't know. The Bible says that I may know him. And the power of his resurrection. 
fellowship of his suffering. That was a prayer that Apostle Paul was praying. He was asking for the manifestation of the person of Jesus. And Judas, not his character, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? And Jesus said, let me tell you something, verse 23. Jesus said, if any man love me, he will keep my words. My father will love him. Look at what will now happen. And we will come to him and make our home with him. Look at me. If God is in your home, if God is in you, Satan dare not enter. There will be attack. But Satan will not prevail because God will fight for you. Of course, the, the enemy will always attack our destinies. But what I'm saying is, if you can stay obedient to the law, don't move away from the instructions God gives to you. Both the written instructions in the Bible and the instruction you know God told you. Don't disobey. To obey is better than sacrifice. To listen to God and do what is 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 better than fats of ram. Many of us are giving prophetic offering to prophets today because you have refused to obey God. And so you find yourself in calamity that now requires special sacrifices. And just the prophet Samuel said to King Saul, you don't need sacrifice if you stay obedient. And remember, there are a certain attack that may take years to heal. It's better you don't enter the devil's trap. Don't marry the wrong person. Don't impregnate someone that you are not going to marry. In, in Western world, you will pay such support till you die. And then, <clears throat> your identity is compromised. Even if you don't marry that lady, she remains your baby mother, whatever you guys call it. Just wait. Don't commit fornication. Don't, 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 mind, don't mind that guy that said that you don't, you don't love him. That's why you don't allow him to sleep with, with, with you. He's a lie. That's what Satan told Adam and Eve. What did they do? They end up losing God. Don't lose God. Stay under God's protection. Remember, all I'm saying today is that the secret place is a place of protection. And I pray for you right now that in the name of Jesus, may the grace that make heavens to be a dwelling place for God, may that grace work upon your life. Pro astafi in kaka azuzuma zite le costa. Fra in da bola ni ani 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 ma azato ne kusta riba. Pra ata didi gabola sufi. Infa hasaturia di gabola. Le fra tubina anzatini anduduku malina. O bradinanto se kusaruria baha. Jesus said if I obey him, if you obey him, then Jesus and the Heavenly Father will make their home with you. I pray that in the name of Jesus, the grace to remain obedient to the law that grace will come upon your life if from viva vaza zaza zege te teke te du gaba ambra onta fi alu katasin da golarama i rebuke every attack from the kingdom of hell that want to make you to begin to be rebellious against god that spirit telling you not to pay your tithe is the spirit of the antichrist over by ye again because when you start paying tight god will not be able to protect your blessing devourer will begin to devour you and then people start finding fault with whatever you are doing i rebuke the spirit of rebellion over your destiny hear me mommy don't say that we are in a western world we're in a civilized world this man cannot take me for a slave you are not a slave but if you are a child of god part of the instructions of the covenant of God, which is the part, uh, part of the instructions of the secret place, is that wife, submit under your own husband. Many of you, you respect us, servants of God, but you don't respect your husband. That is not right. In fact, the Bible says, every woman should submit under her husband's authority as unto Christ. The way you will submit to Jesus, Jesus says, submit to your husband. When you do that, the scripture tells me that God will make your husband to love you. Remember, your power is in humility. And a wise woman build her home. A foolish woman destroy her home with her hand. And if you are watching me, you said, I just love the way this man talks. And I want to have this life that he's talking about. All you need to do is to give your life to Jesus. So if you are there, you want to give your life to Jesus. You want to begin to experience the life of God in a unique way. Place your hand upon your chest and say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I give my heart to you today. Come into my life. Become my Lord and become my Savior. From this day forward, I am yours completely. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name. If you have prayed that prayer, believe me sincerely, 
Congratulations, you are now a child of God. You have been translated from the power of darkness into the kingdom of God's son. Now, three things to do. Get a New Testament Bible. Start reading from the book of Matthew. Why? So that you can begin to know the commandments of Jesus and how to keep the instruction that will keep you in God's secret place. The kingdom of God's dear son. Second, get a church, Bible-believing church to be attending. If you are in Southwest Houston or wherever you are watching us from, if you can be driving every Sunday, be coming to our church. Why? We teach the word of God. We have grace to, 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 to help you grow spiritually because you need to understand the word of God continually so that you can grow and so that you can have an atmosphere where you can be able to use your gift to serve other people. That's the purpose of the church. Why Jesus did not take you to heaven now is because he wants you to be useful among men. And the third thing, please tell someone that now, you are a child of God. I'm so glad for what God is doing in your life. And I thank you for allowing me to bring God's message into your home and into your destiny. But do you know that you can also help me to reach other people? I keep saying that. Because the truth is, the work of God, any great vision cannot be done alone. That's why companies employ people that have different specialties. They will not pay them. In the kingdom of God also, when God gave Moses the vision, God told Moses, tell the people of Israel to, to give free will offering. And when Jesus came to this planet half, go and look at Luke chapter 8. Those of you that said that madam always talk about money. Go and look at Luke chapter 8. The Bible says from verse 1 to 3 that some people gather themselves together and from their private pocket, their private businesses, they were funding Jesus and 12 adults that were following him. You can be a part of those who help me to reach other people. Because my desire is to flood the, 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 the heart with the knowledge of the glory of God, especially in the area of the believer's authority. You can help me. If you have the privilege of connection that can make us to be able to reach other satellite network and connections, please, I'll be glad. I will not need your money. Just give me the connection and let me just go and have the access. And if you have equipment that can help us to do more sophisticated production, let me know. And if you are privileged to have wisdom on how we can, we can spread more using social media platform, please call the number on the screen. 872. 731-7263. I need this message to go far. And together, we will do great things for the Lord. I've got to go right now until I come again next time. Don't you ever forget. No matter what you have gone through in life, I believe that now that you're a child of God and you have opened your, your heart up to understanding and receiving the word, your testimony will soon be that you are wonderful because Jesus is real. I'll see you next time. God bless you. Bye-bye. Wow. I'm Reverend Sam Ajibade, and I want to take this time to specially invite you to be a part of our worship service any Sunday. You know, our church address is Grace Ministries International, 11214, Plainfield Street, by West Belfort, suit D, 77031. Listen to me, everybody needs someone to talk to. In case you have need for counseling, just you can just call the number 872-731. 7263. Listen to me. If you are looking for a place where you will encounter God and get insight in the world, I'll invite you to be a part of our church service every Sunday morning. God bless you. Until I see you. Bye-bye.